Last year around March, I was contacted by Batch Bicycles about taking a look at a bike they were about to launch. And in late October, they had finally gotten things underway and I received a bike. And this is it, but before I open it, let me take a moment to talk about Batch and how they do things. Batch is a mid-tier brand, meaning they're sort of a bridge between big box pricing and local bike shop quality. And as of today, they have at least one bike in multiple categories. Kids, cruiser, mountain, comfort, and commuter. And I mentioned Batch's placement in the market because that's important. Because Batch is owned by UWHK Limited, which is kind of like Durrell. And if you don't know who Durrell is, Durrell makes a lot of the big box bikes you see, like the Schwinn's, the Roadmasters, and the Mongoose. And that's under their Pacific Cycle brand, or their low end, the big box. They also have a high end, which is Cannondale. And like Durrell, UWHK Limited also has a low and a high end. Their low end is Huffy. That's their big box king. And their high end brand is Niner. Now Niner is credited with making 29er wheels popular. And they have some really nice and really expensive bikes. I mean, look at this one. I love my Cannondale Trigger. It's my favorite bike, but this is really nice. And it's 27.5 plus, so it's screaming by me, but I can't. So I'll just have to admire it from a distance. But that's Niner, and that's how their branding is set up. Hovey on one end, Niner on the other. But now Batch, Batch comes in in the middle. That mid-tier I was talking about. And that gets me to the bike that Batch sent me, and that's their mountain bike. It's called the Batch number 707. More on that naming scheme in a moment. And like a bike shop bike, these come in sized frames, and you also get multiple colors to select from. And with the pricing at one penny under $400, they come in slightly below most local bike shop entry-level mountain bikes. And to make it even more appealing, it's not shipped directly to you. It's shipped to a local bike shop close to you where it's professionally assembled and set up. All for less than a comparable bike that that bike shop might normally carry. Now let me note that I did see a pre-release picture of this bike and honestly I'm shocked that they still sent it to me because my reaction well, wasn't negative but at the least I could say I was puzzled. And you may have already spotted why, but if you haven't, don't worry, I'll get to that in just a bit. But first, let me tell you about the name. Batch infers small batches, like, say, an artisan beer. Something that's carefully crafted and made in small lots so they can really pay attention to that quality. And that's what they've got going for them. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like he makes artisan beers on the side. The catch is that these aren't really small batches, they're mass produced, or at least that's how I understood it, but with a high attention to quality, they can claim that artisan small batch product. So now you know what they're going for. Something more than a standard big box bike, but something that doesn't cost as much as a comparable local bike shop bike. And with no worries about assembly or setup. Only this one came directly to me, not to the local bike shop, I guess review channel and whatnot. And it's in the 18 inch frame in Ignite Orange. And that means you're about to see what most batch customers wouldn't, how it's packaged. And here it is, just like a local bike shop would pull it out of the box. And my first glimpse tells me that this is definitely above big box quality. But is it local bike shop quality? Well, we'll find out. Now to get the most customer-centric experience, I put mine together and then took it down to the local bike shop where they gave it a once-over, and the owner happened to be there that day, and he was impressed with the quality, but I think he was less than threatened with the overall product. And that's because even though it's a great quality, and it has some nice components for the most part, one particular component choice sabotaged its chances of being a game-changer. If you haven't already spotted it, don't worry, we're about to get to it because we're going to start at the top and work our way down and see what a batch number 707 is. Now remember, this bike is under $400 and that to me makes these bars perfect because they're 31.8 diameter and 740 millimeters wide, just wide enough to have some fun on trail. And when you pair the bars with their subtle rise and sweep with a 70 millimeter alloy stem, it puts things at an optimal position for most riders. The grips are nothing fancy, they could have been lock-ons at this price, but they do have a good feel to them. And the shifters, it's nice to see they didn't go with the cheap EF500 basic trigger shifter, these are one step up, the EF51. The head tube badging isn't a badge at all, it's embossed and it looks spectacular. The suspension fork has 100 millimeters of travel, preload adjusters, and it's an SR Suntour XCE28. This is an E series, I've never seen that before, so it's new to me. You can see that 29 sticker for the 29 inch wheels. And the tires are small knobbies which hint at the dual purpose they intend for this bike and they're also what I call time zone tires because to me CST is central standard time. So maybe if you live in California, you'll get Pacific Standard Time tires. 
That's a joke. You won't actually get those. The wheels are alloy double wall, and the braking surface on those wheels looks to be well machined. And yes, I said braking surface. Because this bike, a 2019 mountain bike with 29 inch wheels, comes with rim brakes. Front and rear, they went all in with the rim brakes, and this is why the bike shop owner wasn't threatened by this bike, and why I voiced my concerns when they showed me a picture of it. Just why? Because everything else for this price point is so nice. Even though I don't like it, there's nothing I can do about it, so let's move on and hope it doesn't ruin the experience. Because things like the frame, that's really good. Great welds, internal cable routing, a mattish orange paint job that's very well applied. There are even two separate boss sets for bottle cages. Polymer pedals, the forged alloy crank arms, these are 175 millimeters, it's 170 on the smaller frames, and this is a 3 by setup, your standard 24, 34, 42, it's stamped steel. It also has the common tourney derailleur up front, and a tourney in the back too, a TY300. Now this is a 3x7, so it gets a 7-speed freewheel, but usually there's the dreaded 14 to 28 tooth freewheel. This one gets a little extra range. It's a 14 to 32 tooth, and that should help pedal these 31 pounds up a hill. Both the front and rear wheels are quick release, and the bottom bracket is a sealed cartridge. So overall, not bad if it weren't for those rim brakes, and I guess whoever picked out the brakes also picked out the seat clamp, because it's standard and not a quick release. I mean, come on guys, that's like 10 cents. But at least they stopped there, because the seat post is alloy, and the saddle, I mean, it looks kind of cheap, but it's actually fairly comfortable. So that's the batch number 707. It's a decent bike, but it could have been great. Just that one choice, which is a major turnoff for me, and I assume quite a few people that are probably watching this video. At least they nailed the quality. Let's hope that it all comes together into a package that surprises me, because I have been surprised before. Quality's got a lot of work to make up, because you know I'm generally not a fan of 29ers. The geometry just feels weird to me, but this isn't bad at all. I feel right at home, and the 740mm bars, they're perfect for me right now on the trail, because they're not too wide and not too narrow. And yes, I am taking it a bit easy, but remember, I'm not supposed to be on the trail yet. Plus, this isn't a hardcore mountain bike. It's more a daily rider, something you can kick around town on or ride to class, but also ride on light trails when you want to. And on light trails like this, where they're smooth with just a few bumps from roots and whatnot, it's kind of a perfect setup for this bike. And as far as the rim brakes, I mean, it's evident that this bike isn't a disc brake bike, but they do work well enough, at least when it's dry, and they're also quiet. So the theme thus far is that quality does make this bike, at least for what it is. And also proper setup, which all batch buyers should get because you're going to get it shipped to and assembled by a local bike shop. Because the more I ride it, the more comfortable it is. I mean, at the very least, it's a therapy bike, I guess. So I see where they're going or where they want to go with this, and I think they're probably pretty close. Even when I'm doing things that I don't like to do, like climb climb on a 3x7 bike, it's doable. And that's where those extra teeth on that freewheel come in handy. It also makes me wonder why bikes like a Trek Marlin 4 don't use this gear. And that Suntour XCE fork, it feels like I'm riding an XCR and XCT. I really can't tell the difference. It feels like every other Suntour low-end fork. And it's smooth enough that I haven't had any sudden jolts of pain. So it's doing its job, as is everything else on the bike. I mean, yes, that rear derailleur is slapping around a bit, but it is a tourney. There are no noises or creaks coming from the bottom bracket or from the frame. Again, I think the quality build comes into play here. And this is a somewhat enjoyable ride on a bike that, on paper, I wouldn't think I would be enjoying. And in my experience with it thus far, if this had disc brakes, it would definitely be a winner. That's not to say it's a loser as is, it's just not what I know it could be. But it is familiar, remember I said that earlier. Because it reminds me a lot of riding a Trek 820. I had one of those last year in the hopes of reliving my old Trek 4300 glory days. But it is a lot like the 820 if the 820 had wider bars and shed some weight. And I know that makes no sense because the 820 is a 26er. I don't know, that might not be that outlandish of a statement, because the A20 does have rim brakes just like this batch. It also has a 3x7 drivetrain, and incidentally, it's priced the same. Let me say, if it came between these two bikes, I would definitely take the batch, but that's really bad for the batch, because I'm comparing it to a Trek 820, which has really fallen behind. And that presents a problem for the 707. So let me break it down, both the good and the not so good, after having ridden it on the trail for the day. And the good starts with the bars. They're perfect for this setup, and the stem puts everything in the right spot. 
And I really like that on the shifters, they went one step up. I mean, they could have used the same EF500 that everyone uses on bikes under $500. And the 100 millimeters of fork travel, that's also a plus because go to your local bike shop and you're gonna get 75 millimeters for anything close to this price range. And the time zone tires, I really like them and they should work well for the dual purpose that the 707 should see. And this frame, I've already gushed about it with its finish and its internal cable routing. I mean, that's an upsell item at your local bike shop. And that drivetrain, I mean, as far as 3x7 goes, it is good. That 14 to 32 tooth mega range, it's noticeable on hills. And like a ray of sunshine, I had to wait to get this shot. It's nice to see a company that decided to use a dork disc that doesn't look so dorky. There's also a hidden touch on this bike, and I didn't notice it until I was at the end of the trail and I leaned the bike up against a bench. But it looks like it's laser edged, it's underneath the left seat stay, and I like this touch. That's a little bit of uplifting before I get to what's not so good. And obviously the main thing is going to be those rim brakes. I mean, I feel they're going to give this bike limited market appeal. And they even affect that frame that I like so much because they didn't give it any future flexibility. There are no rear disc brake mounts. And I haven't looked it up, but I suspect that the E on that XCE fork denotes that this is a rim brake version. It's probably why it doesn't have disc brake mounts either. And that's the main things because the other two are just curious choices, like cheaping out and putting a non-quick release seat clamp. I mean, $59 bikes have quick release seat clamps. And then there's this, which is just bizarre. There are chips all over the chainstay from the chain slapping it. Now, I routinely don't use chainstay protection when I do an introductory review on a bike because I want all the noises. It's a feedback on how the bike's doing. And as you saw, I wasn't riding it hard, and this is beat badly. And that's because they didn't put that clear decal that you see on every other bike that gives you about two rides worth of protection. So if you do decide to buy one of these, make sure you wrap it before you ride it. And it may sound like I'm being harsh, but I'm really not. I just think this bike needs disc brakes to be able to compete in the market, and those other things are just bizarre. And Batch, if you see this, how about you contact me before you do your next mountain bike and I can give you some design tips that won't cost you anything. Because you've got the quality nailed, and with the local bike shop set up, you could easily dominate the market at this price point if you had the right bike. I know you can do it, because look at your commuter. It's set up perfectly, and if it has the build quality of the 707, I suspect that if people find out about it, you're going to have a hit on your hands. And to everyone else watching, what do you think? Be sure to drop me a note in the comments section and let me know if you think I'm being overly critical or if I nailed it, because I think I nailed it. And if you're new, welcome, and you should hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And there's also a Patreon link in the description if you want even more Kev Central content. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And also follow the advice on the bottom of that seat stay. It's good stuff.